Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashrothi, and this is the Eve Universe show, kind of. No, this is my uh, stream. We, we actually, this is the fifth of my We Hype training videos. The first three, of course, were with Flamboss, but this, the last two, we did the exploration one last week. This is the Abyss one. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, my plan is I am going, uh, I want to explain a little bit about the Abyss kind of broadly. We'll talk about what sort of build and strategy I'm going to have. And then uh, whatever time we have left for the last two, for the remainder of the two hours, we're going to just run some tier threes in this tier three trainer and uh, see what happens and uh, hopefully get some live, uh, I guess, practical demonstration. All right. So first and foremost, what is the abyss? Well, as with a lot of things with Eve, uh, if you come into the, your agency, you can find out more information. In this case, if you go to Encounters and then to uh, Abyssal Dead Space, we'll find a lot more information. So basically, there's an alien race who has developed these abyssal filaments that allows us to go into their uh, parallel kind of deep reality known as Abyssal Dead Space. In reality... Like in, in practical terms, the Abyssal Dead Space is a three-room, semi-random, semi timed dungeon, uh, for instance timed dungeon for PvE. So basically, you have 20 minutes to complete three uh, semi-random challenges in 20 minutes. And uh, if you do so, then you make it out alive with all of the loot that you can collect. And if you fail to, you and everything that you own in your pod and your clone and all of your implants and everything is destroyed. It's just that simple. So um, each room has a main prize known as the biocache. Bio and there are secondary prizes that you are able to go after if you want to, known as extractors. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those and the kind of rewards that we get in a little bit. But uh, let's, talk a let's talk more about the challenges that you face. The... Abyss itself is divided into seven different tiers of difficulty and five different what's called weather pattern or weather types. So weather types are special effects that affect all ships within the abyss, uh, much like metaliminal storms and other and uh, you know other like system wide effects. So each one of these effects are centered around one uh, tank type. So electricals uh, influence EM firestorm. Uh, thermal, gamma, explosive, and exotic kinetic, and then has one other bonus. Darks make you faster and make turrets uh, have give turrets much shorter range. So it, it really kills turrets, but it makes fast missile ships be able to survive a lot better. Um, so the key here is is that the the scenarios within the abyss are uh, are the same no matter which weather type you have. Uh, they just get harder as you go up the tiers. And uh, the different weathers influence what is or isn't that dangerous, right? It also influences what kind of ships are good at various different um, uh, different things. So this is why you generally, when you talk about ship fits in the Abyss, you want to talk about a ship fit that is designed for specific weather. You can theoretically get a ship that is designed to go with like any weather, theoretically, but in essence, if you're good enough to do in any weather, that means that you're not maximizing the bonus of, of any of the weathers. And so you could have been doing better if you were like utilizing the strengths. Good examples of this is um, the electrical bonus actually doubles your capacitor or up to doubles your capacitor recharge rate, which means ships that are not cap stable in the real world are cap stable there. This can help ships that like Amar ships or even new bros that have cap dependency, uh, maybe cap issues. You can get a lot more out of your capacitor uh, in electrical and be able to get away with a lot of really interesting things. Oversized shield boosters, um, uh, extra, you know, all kinds of stuff. Firestorms give your opponent are, are one of the most uh, one of the more difficult uh, of the weathers because uh, even though you get extra thermal damage, it gives everybody additional armor hit points. And, uh, you know, obviously your armor buffer is only so useful with keeping you alive, but it is just more hit points for you to have to grind through of your enemy. So uh, firestorms are often considered to be one of the more difficult weathers to go after. Also, the Triglavian enemies that you face in the abyss, one of the types of enemies that you abyss uh, that you face in the abyss, which are some of the harder encounters, generally uh, shoot thermal and explosive damage. So uh, firestorms are extra deadly for that reason too. Exotics 
are kinetic and scan resolution. A lot of people like these because of Gila. Gila's having the bonus for kinetic and for um, thermal damage, and this isn't a firestorm. Um, oftentimes, exotics are considered to be the easier version of a firestorm for that reason. And finally, gammas are used a lot by uh, passive shield recharge. Uh, a lot of healers like that for to try to stay alive, etc. Because of that bonus to shield hit points. Unlike armor, shield has that passive recharge bonus. Recharge bonus. So if you go with a more passive healer, which I, by the way, do not recommend. But if you do, uh, that gam this gamma weather will uh, effect will allow your passive recharge to be even stronger. Um, unlike the armor uh, armor hit point one, which really doesn't do anything for you. So each tier of the abyss is escalating in in difficulty, and also uh, the weather effect gets more severe as you go up too. So um, I think it's once you get to tier four and tier five, you start to get to more extreme versions of the weather, which actually means that the the resistance hole gets more extreme, which can be useful to you because remember you still got to kill everything. So it's actually sometimes you can kill things faster at a higher tier because they have lower resistances. But of course, there's also going to be more of them, so it's, you know, more challenging. Either way. So one of the ways to tell which um, which filament is which is the number of notches on the filament. So tier 0 has no notches, tier 1 has one notch, tier, tier 2 has two notches, tier 3 has three notches, tier 4 has four notches, tier 5, and tier 6 has this last notch down the middle too. Uh, tier 6 is extremely hard, as it says, very few builds are actually designed to uh, do it consistently. Um, it used to be that tier 5 was the most hardest builds. As far as rewards go, you will get uh, Triglavian data sheets and, um, and other such things. Uh, you get Triglavian data sheets, mutaplasmids, which allow you to uh, randomly mutate various modules, um, more, key, more filaments for other uh, abyss, and um, uh, blueprints and the materials to manufacture Triglavian stuff as well as the skill books to use them. Um, I'm pretty sure that's it. So we are going to try this out. I have this Gila build here. This is from Fonsui's uh, workbench. I have, um, I will post in the chat here. I have the uh, a notion uh, on the Convocation Empyrean's notion board. We have an abyssal section, which has all kinds of useful links. It has the cheat sheet. It has rat breakdowns. It has uh, Fonsui's workbench link where you can get a bunch of good fits for a lot of different ships. Uh, and, you know, the Eve Uni wiki guide and the abyssal tracker dot space or whatever uh, website. So um, this is going to I have the standard. Fonsui's Exo Firestorm build, and I will be doing Firestorms today. See how that works. I just bought this in Gila, or sorry, in uh, Gita, uh, this Gila. It is, it was about 475 million uh, in today's price, which isn't terrible. Uh, it looks like the market value has gone down from the changes. But first and foremost, you don't want to run the Abyss in, in Gita. So we're going to start moving our way out of here. How's it going, guys? By the way, as we get started, I will be doing this scope raffle uh, throughout the entire stream. And then at the end, of, I will be pulling two different winners for scope skins. But you have to be here at the end. So, and that'll be in two hours or so. Self drive active. All right. So one of the reasons why I really like the Abyss is, well, there's two, there's a few reasons. One is that unlike PvE, or sorry, unlike missions, the Abyss gives you encounters that force you to deal with all different kinds of electronic warfare and all different kinds of combat scenarios, forces you to, uh, not really forces, but encourages you to do manual piloting and just kind of good, pil uh, good piloting and think about situations a bit more complexly than you do in the in in missions. The Abyss, to me, isn't just a way to make money. Uh, I like to see the Abyss as uh, like your flight, your flight training, right? Like it's your 
Uh, it's your simulator. It's your encounter generator, right? So, if you want to fly, uh, and sorry, something I missed earlier, you can do the Abyss as a solo cruiser, up to two destroyers, and up to three frigates. So, if you want to, you can use this to train yourselves as a team to fly around in frigates and, you know, do solo piloting and tackling and all kinds of stuff um, in a pretty useful way. Uh, likewise, you know, I, you can, I've learned a lot about mining piloting target, um, selection and the strengths and weaknesses of various ships by flying them in the abyss first and foremost. You know, one of the things is, is that like, not every foot, not all a football player that plays football, not just professionally, but just seriously, doesn't just play football during the game, right? The musician that, that, that studies mu music not even professionally, but just takes their hobby seriously, takes their takes their understanding of musical performance, whatever instrument they have seriously, doesn't just perform when they're in front of somebody or when it's a concert or when they, you know, whatever. These people practice every day, even the ones that are good, right? It doesn't matter how, you don't get so good that you stop doing your football training. You don't become such a good musician that you stop practicing your scales every day. In fact, those who do, are the ones who stay good, right? And so in that sense, I like to encourage people to look at the abyss as your scales. It's your drills. It's your basic piloting. It's where you get your your hundred or thousand hours of flight under your belt um, because, you, you know, actual combat is often too chaotic, too confusing, and quite frankly, too unreliable to be a good training system. The abyss is good because in the abyss, things are going fine until they're not. And when they don't, you get punished for it. And but you can always kind of look back and dissect what went wrong and figure out how to do it better. Or at least somebody else can do it for you by talking to them, because the abyss has very clear cut scenarios. And the better you understand it, the better off you do. So I strongly recommend people to take the time to to. You know, figure out the abyss as your PVE if you want to. It's not something that you just buy a ship and you're done. One of the reasons why you build, buy something like a starter starter caracal or a starter Gila or something like that is because you do have a lot to learn and not knowing is going to kill you. So it's good to use ships that you're willing to lose so that way you can get good. It's not just the fact that your ship isn't is good enough. It's not the fact that you know your skill points aren't good enough. You have to get good enough too. You have to understand and be able to identify ships uh, you know, you have to identify the threats within the abyss, recognize them for who, what they are, uh, identify the ships by sight or by name, rather. Um, and, and that only comes from practice. And, you know, you don't understand the full limitations of your of your ship until you lose it. So. Ultimately. If you want to get good in this game, like don't focus on how you're going to master your isk right away. Don't figure out how you're going to. Like, ma like, uh, don't worry about how much isk you're making when you're still doing like level one or level two or level three or, or level one or level two abyss or, or even le sorry level zero through two abyss right. Level zero and level one is designed to just teach you the structure of the abyss right, just to show you where the boundaries are, where the caches are, where the um, where the extractors are, you know how the extractors are, what the gates look like, all that kind of stuff. The rats themselves are are not; they don't even have all of the different kinds of rats. By the time you get to tier two, now you're starting to see all the different kinds of rats, all the different kinds of uh, E-War, all the different kinds of threats uh, that are coming at you. And then by the time you hit tier three, that's when you're in like the full on encounters. This is when you start to see like like basically everything past tier three is just harder versions of tier three, right? Everything's just more. So tier three is what I like to call the bread and butter tier. You're getting about the same amount of isk as you would uh, doing level four missions or ratting in a ship that is equivalent in cost as level four missions, you know, three, uh, sorry, four or 500 million, um, you know, all that stuff. And when you get, once you get 20 to hundred abyss under your table, under your belt, tier three, then start stepping up into higher tiers because you've, it isn't just about seeing all of the different encounters, which there's only about 12 different rooms in the game or in the abyss. It's about seeing the most extreme versions of each room. It doesn't matter if you can handle the Lushak room. Can you handle the two tangling, two nuding Lashaks or two, two tangling 
one nuding or one tangling, two nuding, one damping or one uh, regen Lishak. Like, can you handle the perfect storm of problems? Because if you haven't figured out how to deal with it on tier three, then when you hit it in tier four or tier five, it's just going to rip you apart. With all that said, uh, I want to jump into it. There's there's a bunch of different kinds of enemies. Like I said, each there's only about 12 different rooms. I can't remember. They added in a few more, so I don't know what the exact count is now. Um, but then there are, are basically random options within them. So let's go ahead and check it out. The elite symbol to room is death. I mean, that is... That's the thing. One of the one of the issue one of the things are that one of the things that used to be really good they added in a few more rooms the uh, angel room the sancha room and some changes to the triglavian rooms that made them particularly good at the things that people were using to overwhelm the abyss before. So yeah, it's a bit trickier, but we'll get there. I have uh, this Gila here. Like I said, it's a fire uh, exo firestorm trainer build. From Fonsui's workbench. Uh, I do have a hard shell. For extra tank if I need it. Uh, I have crash. Which I don't think I'm going to need that one so much. And uh, blue pill. So if I really really need to. I can take this crash and this blue pill together. And that will significantly up my tanking potential. But uh, yeah. Crazy train are you a streamer? I don't, I, I feel almost embarrassed that I have to ask that. I didn't know you actually started streaming. Oh, well, okay, well then yeah, let me do it. I don't know why, I don't know, man. I, I just had a total ma madness moment. There you go. I don't know names, man. My brain fritzes. Anyway, so uh, I am actually in, I, so I left Jita. I'm now in a system with significantly fewer people. Just a few jumps away. I would recommend getting even further, but uh, um, for now, this is good enough. Let's go ahead and go. So as we enter into the abyss, we will see. You'll notice that your my capacitor flashes. The capacitor flashing is your indication that you are now in the abyss. You can actually turn on all your modules and everything like that, and you'll keep your your invuln as you come in. Every hey hey. Glorification of the fit, mortification of the unfit. Hey, man, you, Setonia, are glorified. I just got started. We are tra doing some basics of the abyss. I literally just got started, so it's good to see you. Setonia's been hanging out with the uh, Aderon Robotics guys, doing Faction Warfare, too. How's that been going? So, as you can see, there the, you know there's different rats that are coming after me, and uh, I can tell by their names which ones do which. I wanted to take out the tangling first. Now, uh, I should probably get rid of one of these harrowing Vedmax next. So, we'll take care of this guy. This is one of those rooms that I think I might actually want to get this uh, this blue pill down. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> Double Harrowing Vedmax is very, very nasty, as you can see. So, I need to take these guys down, quick. Luckily, I just hit a speed puddle, or portal, or whatever, which resets my, my timer. The big problem with speed is, of course, I might end up outside, uh, or near the boundary. Uh, so, I'm going to want to be very careful about that, but for now... It just makes it so that I can get away from those Vedmax and reset their 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 gun, which is really convenient to me. I'm going to start shooting this guy with my missiles. Getting this bio-adaptive catch done too would be nice, so we're going to hit that next. And this is why I carry around a tractor beam with me. Oh, what, what has happened? Why? Why did that happen? That wasn't good. A module has run out of charges.
4.6 million. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Hey, B Cone, thank you for that sub. 07 to you. 07's in chat. All right, first room is more or less down. Normally, I would go after extractors, but with a, a room that spooky, I wanted to focus predominantly on the room itself. So here we go. Uh, what's the averages per hour? You know, I'm not 100% sure. That's one of the reasons why we're going to do it for a couple hours and see. All right, so I'm going to go with short range deviant automata suppressor. Which is ironically over here. Well, okay. So the suppressor is uh, this short-range deviant automata, deviant automata suppressor will uh, go a long ways in killing these uh, suppressors for me, but or these uh, rogue drones for me. But I I think I'm going to let uh, my drones and, and missiles get some work done too. As a matter of fact, I think I'm just going to let that them do their job. Hey, what's up, Silver? Silver Sus Sus Suspira just did a great interview with uh, Talking Stations. Uh, so at this point, this is one of those things that, like, I would assess. There's only four of them left, so and that biocache is 60 away. I actually like to go after biocaches. E so even when it's easy, right, even when it's a room is not, not going to kill me, I still want to do it efficiently, right? Like, if I can grab a biocache as I'm finishing the room, then great. So I like to think about that. I like to strategize how am I going to do my the room as, a, you know, not just how am I going to win, but how am I going to execute the room? One of the nice things about Vespas are, because uh, they're shield tanked. Once again, shield tanks uh, have passive regen. So you can actually let them kind of stay out there and hold their own a little bit longer than a lot of other drones. Ironically, I think it's a, it, I think gammas help with that too. Which is important because like this is one of those things that makes the Gila really, really strong. And a lot of people think the worm is strong and it's not as strong as people want it to be. And the reason why is because, um, oof, man, it's another one of those double harrowing bed mac rooms. All right. We're just going to take down those first, and then we can let's head to an extraction node. Where is it? Yeah, there's an extraction node there. Where's the other extraction nodes? Down there. Oh, there's two down there. Yeah, let's go down there. I'm just going to kind of help let this ghosting Damovic do its thing because it's not doing much of anything. Although, are they going after my rats? They are. That's so bizarre. 
well, we'll we'll pull them in. Let them come after me, I guess. There we go. As as God intended, I guess. I don't know. My uh, traffic unit is 20 kilometers, 22 kilometers, I think. So that's how far I need to get in. I can help kill this guy in the meantime. Hey, Darker White comes with a subscription to 07. Oof. Them bed max, man, they're so nasty. Especially harrowing bed max. They're spooky. So I'm gonna pull in this track this thing, loot it. Drop that tractor unit, or tractor beam, gra gra loop the other one, or uh, and then start tractoring the other one. Oh, except for the other one's empty. Frosty McNuggins coming in with a tier one subscription. Thank you so much for that. I, I'm, I'm sure that we're so close to a hype train at this point. Oh sevens in chat. Oh sevens to you. Uh, I think. Yeah, these are both done. Z's. It's actually a really poor idea with these. Uh, uh with the trig. Ships because they they spider tank so you want to kill them as fast like you want to kill them one at a time to overwhelm their their reps. Ah oh, boo! I shouldn't have start, started my reload so soon. I should have uh I should have popped the cash first. Oh, well, here we go. Never mind, I can pop the cash now. Once again, this is why I keep my tractor unit as my fi as my uh, utility high, because it's just so handy to be able to just drag these wrecks around. The reason why I'm going with Firestorm, I could have gone with an exotic, it would have been a lot more... Uh, safer for me, but uh, the thing is, is that Firestorm keys are basically f worth nothing. So uh, I get a hundred percent of the profit, or you know, a hundred percent of the value of the stuff, basically that I I loot in the abyss, and I like that. So I stick with Firestorms. That was it. That was that basically is the entirety of the abyss. Three rooms, three challenges. Uh, in that case, I had two of the uh, Vedmac rooms and one Rogue Drone room, which is fine. You can see that, like, under the correct conditions. I mean, like that time it was fine because I had two harrowing. But like, if I had too many, if I had two harrowing and a starving, or a harrowing and a starving, or two. Like two more tangling damavix, or there can be combinations that are actually even nastier than what I encountered, and I already had some pretty close, or like you know, not so happy moments. So we're gonna jump right back in. I'm doing firestorms of the Vespa. Problem number one, I should be doing thermal damage, so I should be using hammerheads.
My bad. Hopefully that'll help. Um, I'm going to head to the medium range. There's also an extractor node. Where's the extractor node? That way. Cool. I'm going after that first. I'm going to go after the extractor node. And then I'm going to go up. There we go. Uh, I'm actually going to pull on my drones. Oh, no, that's not a suppressor at all. I'm not, I'm not pulling in my drones. I'm not pulling in my drones. Oh, well. This could hurt. Yes, they still have timer timers. It's a 20 minute timer. You can see it in the top left corner. Is there another, where's the other node? Oh, it's all the way up there. Eh, I'm good. <laughs> Sending out them emotes. I need to, I was thinking about changing out the emotes now that Liberation Day is over, but uh, I'm not sure what I should do. Should I do the Amar houses now? Send in thanks for joining us down the rabbit hole with Eve Online. Another four million there. So I'm getting about three to four million per room. I mean, that's still about nine to ten million per uh, per run for tier three, which is about what I remember it to be. So seems all right. I mean, I'm, what, halfway through my second one, not even, and I, oh, hold on, that's pulling drones. Uh, and I'm at 18 million already, so, doing okay. Oops, darn it, this is going to be bad. I mean, not bad, but. I generally don't like to, I like to have my reload done by the time I already jump. Uh, obfuscator, watchman. Go with that. I don't really care about the null warper because I don't use a micro warp drive. Hmm. Did the suppressor just kill my missile? Is that what happened? Maybe. Whoa. 
It must be. Huh. That is very annoying. Basically, the, uh, the suppressor does damage, and it looks like it's doing enough damage that it's killing my missile before it makes it to the extractor node. So I have to get even closer. Not a big fan of that, but there it goes. Man, oh man. All right, well, let's just start heading to the transfer conduit. This is going to be bad for my drones, too, if they hang out in here too long. Ah, two million for that, though, so I guess it's kind of worth it. Let's go ahead and kick back over this direction, because I don't want them to, like, think that it's a good idea to hang out in that suppressor. If I need to, I can always pull in my drones, too. The good news is, is that, so the, the, the more powerful the suppressor, the, sh the shorter the range, right? Short range deviant atomic suppressors are the ones that do the most damage. So given that it's short range deviant atomic suppressor, that means that uh, it's easier to get out of too. I'm just doing tier, th we're just doing tier threes for demonstration purposes. It's just training videos. I talked about what Abyss is and we're just kind of uh, showing it off for, for people that might be new to it. I like to say that tier three is your bread and butter tier. You should probably sit on tier three for at least 20 to 100 runs before ever deciding to step up into tier four. Personally, that's just what I feel. And even when I get a new ship, like if I get a brand new build for the Abyss, I've learned. I've learned to run tier three for like at least 20 more runs with that ship before ever taking it to tier four because you need to understand how the encounters work with each ship. Absolutely, I can show the fit. So this is from uh, Fonsui's workbench. Uh, it has a lot of different really high quality ships and builds for the Abyss. Uh, this is the Exo Trainer, Exo Firestorm Trainer. And I'm doing it in the Firestorm version, so the more difficult version of the two. Can you do this on 3D disabled mode? Uh, yeah, maybe, but I use my, I use depth, per, I use my, my vision, of, I look around and see visual, you know, visually where things are in three dimensional space a lot. So, I mean, I know that there are definitely people and builds and stuff that work basically just off the overview and are kind of brain dead. But I mean, I, I, as I said before, I fly the abyss to get active flight time in, right? So, could... All right, so this these guys are nasty. Um, the the sleeper battleships, they are not only giant tanks, but they also have local or they they rep each other. So I'm gonna bust up there real quick and start getting damage on them as quickly as possible. Is that node? Let me get this node too. Like I said, I don't like to go out of my way, or I don't, I don't like stay in, in, uh, I don't, I don't go after a node if it's going to give me extra time. But if I can get a node, if I can get one of these extraction nodes without adding any additional time, if I can do it while everybody else is still fighting, then that's just bonus isk. Oh boy, that's that's uh, becoming an interesting problem. The FLT's Lancer is going after my hammerhead in a way I am not a big fan of. But I don't want to switch off of the Dream Watcher. Because if I switch off of the Dream Watcher, then the other Dream Watcher will start repping it and undo all of the work I've done so far. So I'm going to get ready to pull in my hammerhead if I need to and swap over.
But I'm really hoping to just finish them off first. That'll do. That'll do. Come home, little drone. You're done. You're done for this run, man. You fought hard. You fought well. It's time for you to rest and let someone else take over. Good job, little drone. All right, and waiting on this last one to get done. All right, let's see here. Is it possible to avoid the clouds and things like that? That would be a little bit more difficult. Since I think you pretty much only get a visual indicator of them until... I mean, like, you'd see when you're in a cloud, you can get out again. Get out of my way, Dream Watcher! These battleships are often just giant piles of hit points. Which, of course, like, when there's four or five of these dudes in Tier 4, Tier 5, Tier 6, then, uh, it ain't no joke. And that's number two. Two down. 25 million so far. That's actually really good. Let's keep it going, man. I gotta wait for the filament to go away. Uh, assuming I'm doing these things in like 12, 13 minutes, that means I'm making about a million is per minute. So this is about 60 million is per, per hour, which is about right for tier three. Tier four would be two to three times more. And then tier every tier above that is about two to three times more. All right. Eh. Aegises are going to be my normally my high, higher priority, but uh, given the fact that this ship I think has double uh, cat batteries, I'm less worried about uh, newts. So probably just going to worry about them. I am going to just where's this extractor? Oh yeah, let's go there. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Drop, drop my drones too fast, apparently. Hey. Hey. Oh. Really? Oh, good. It lived. 
啊哈。All right. Well, He <laughs> deserves a purple heart. I know, right? That drone, that drone's getting a medal after this. And there you have it. I'm a little bit away from my gate, which is not great. Or it's not, like, perfect, but it's fine. I'm on my way. As you can tell, it's also a really big difference between people who run all of the rooms, or that, that manage to get extractors, rather, um, versus those who don't. Snare casters, huh? Short range deviant automata suppressor. Right over there. And a speed cloud. Yay! And a ca cache. We're going. Wow, this is actually a super nasty room the more that I look at it. With all of these snare casters and then the spark rips. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's take this seriously. This could get really nasty real fast. Good thing it won't. But it coulda. The problem I'm going to run into is, uh... These guys are going to be able to, uh... The spark rips are going to, or the, the tesseras are going to be able to kill, like, blat my drones if they want to. But we'll see. So these battle cruisers, these rogue drone battle cruisers, are, are one of the uh, kind of deceptively challenging things in the abyss. They, they don't have very good range. They only have, like, 8 kilometers range with, a, with like, a 4-kilometer falloff. So it's only 12 kilometers. But uh, they, they have such good tracking that it doesn't matter. And they, uh, if they can get within range of you, like this guy's about to be, he's start going. To, he's going to start doing major damage to me. But thankfully, the speed cloud's going to fix that for me a little bit. I'm going to start heading this direction though, instead of going after that, uh, that cache. I think, just to avoid any problems. since that tesser is still on my butt. Oh man, that guy's right on me. Oh, 
Oh, dude. That guy's got... Yeah, these guys are, are very much too much damage to be this close to me. What is happening? I need to do something about this. Oh, man, and he's going after my drone now? Stop it! I'm gonna have to use a Vespa, man. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, good. Thank God. Wait, let's pull these in. Not, do not keep overheating my afterburner. I'm going to use my last middle missile on the cache. A module has run out of charges. Tessers aren't terribly difficult. Like, like a single tesser isn't that big of a deal to a cruiser necessarily. But uh, frigates, man. Frigates will disappear if you let them. I know I was muted. I was muted because my son came in. I need to talk to him real quick. Hey, Simfati. Yeah, I'm, it's actually uh, my final, the final piece of that collab, although I'm doing it by myself. Uh, we're, I'm doing some abyssal training or just explaining some abyssal stuff. Hey, Canuck Down Under. So that is three runs. I'm going to dock up and repair some stuff now. I've only gone... Well, I, I, I still have 26 minutes on my booster, so that's a pretty good sign of how long things have been. And I've gotten... 52 million isk. Oh, nope, there's still another room. Haha. <laughs> Psych. Stormbringer, Skybreaker, oh god, must get, must get drones out, must get them away from me. Get them away from me. And there's double drainers. Okay, so we're going to take this room seriously. We're going to kill the drainer frigate first, and then, sorry, the frigate first, as I said, and then the cruiser. Pacifier is frigate, uh, enforcer is cruiser. Newts are nasty, although this ship does have double capa capacitor uh, batteries, which give it, like, nearly 40% or more uh, capacitor resistance, capacitor drain resistance. It is still true that being drained of your capacitor is the single most deadliest thing that can happen to this ship. So uh, you want to get rid of that before it's too big of a problem. And also you want to keep your drones away from your ship whenever fighting these skybreakers and stuff. Maybe I can get them to hit each other. Can I, can I get one to hit the other? Wow. Probably too late to find out now. Uh, okay, there's a lot of extractors, though. There's one, two, three. Okay, let's see if I can get... Can I get this way? Those are so far away. Bioadaptive cache. All right, we're going to go looking into uh, popping this cache and getting it before, before we leave. And actually, we could probably grab that second cache, too, since we're all the way out here. What I like to do is when we pop this. Oh, man, come on. Is this short range? Oh, let me hit it. Come on, just let me hit it. You chump! Well, I'm now I'm not going to go after those last notes because this is now going to take longer than I wanted. There we go. Good night.
any rate, what I like to do is when I pop the second cache, I then turn off the tractor beam on the first one, and then start approaching it, and then tractor beam the second one back to the first one. Which I'd be able to demonstrate to you if I didn't have to go into point bank range for either of them. Boo! Anywho. I got my ISK. Let's get out of here. Oh, wait. Come on. So about 50 million ISK in three runs. That's actually really good. I thought the Abyss had gone down in price or in value, but uh, at least that seems better than it was even before. Well, 40 million. I guess that's, uh, 40 million in three runs. That's still good. Still good. Return my hammerheads there. Now we'll go repair. Yeah, the dodgy internet thing is a big concern. When I didn't have good internet, I became terrified of the abyss. That's actually one of the... I'm still trying to get back into it now. Nope. I just wanted to... This is a training video, so I'm just using um, Fonsui's Abyssal T T3 starter build. Which is a like four hundred seventy-five million. Self drive active. We're gonna go repair real quick uh, and get right back out to it. I will be. I'm gonna go check on my son in the living room while we dock up. All right, uh, so let's see here. We are just about halfway done. Can you give a quick, quick shakedown on what you're doing after watching the collab streams? Uh, what am I doing after watching the collab streams? I'm not sure what that question means. I did, uh, so, uh, you know, obviously if you go back and watch the VOD, I did a bigger explanation as to, like, the what we're doing here, but just to catch it up, we're doing a thing called the Abyss, which is an instanced PvE uh, that is three-room semi-random timed dungeons. You have 20 minutes to complete three challenges. If you do it in that time, then you get out with all the loot. If you don't, then you get destroyed. I like it particularly because it is... Uh, the the PVE that best rewards good piloting and and helps you learn to and practice your basic piloting skills in EVE Online and get rewarded for it better than other PVE does. And more consistently than PvP, to be frank. All right, we are jumping in. Yeah, we didn't quite get to this one. Um, I was hoping to, but... All right, so this is going to be the sleeper room again. So the two lucid dream watchers, same thing as before. We're going to get DPS onto them as fast as possible. Once I do, then I can start paying attention to the different extractor nodes. Looks like there's one, two there. Let's go that direction. Uh, medium range, short range. 
Hmm. And all the extractor nodes are up there. So this is another, this is a good example of one of those rooms. Like, I could have just sat around and did nothing as my drone slowly grinded away at their, at the, uh, Deep Watcher. But by putting in the extra effort, I'm probably going to be able to get some more money out of it. And, of course, there's yet another short-range DV auto automata suppressor right next to one of these extraction nodes. So, whatever. I'm not bitter, you're bitter. Look at how fast they kill my drones, man. Or my missiles, man. Just, bloop, they come out and immediately just vanish. Alright, good. Now, ironically, my my drones can't attack the deep watcher right now because I'm not within 60 kilometers of it. But like, who cares? I'm just going to dip right in. Uh, all your drones, all my drones behave though. Well, so if, if a target is outside of your drone control range, you can't assign your drones to it. So you can dip into your drone control range, assign the drones and then dip back out. That's why some people like to have a drone, con drone range augmenter as their, uh, utility high. But, um, as long as you've got, uh, advanced drone av avionics, I think it is. Um then that maximizes your drone control range and you get to like 60 kilometers, which should be good enough for everything besides like all damp shacks or something like that. Uh, no, this is no implants. Right. Well, I, the only implant I have right now is a 3% CPU implant because that's the closest thing to a blank clone I have at the moment. Again, this was designed to show people an entry level experience for the abyss or not necessarily entry level, but like once you get your basic understanding of what the abyss is, this is what you, you can do. And, uh, as your kind of bread and butter for pretty much as long as you want to tier three is perfectly fine. It's a, as I said, it's about the same equivalent both in cost for investment and reward as like level four missions. Ooh, this is one of them cool uh, new rooms. Hold on, let's see here. Uh, let's start heading towards that extraction node. And I'm gonna guess the trappers are what I'm gonna want. You guys are fast.
Slendered, I think. Thr thank you for joining us down the rabbit hole deep online. John Link augmented to his range. Did I say something differently earlier? My bad. My bad if I did. Is this room one or two? I mean, it must be room two. I've only got, uh, it's been, s I don't think this one room took six minutes, right? That's not, po or eight minutes. That's almost impossible. This must be room two. If that room, if room, when one room took a uh, new, what? I don't, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Let's go. Yep. Starving Vedmac. There we go. Starving Vedmac. Harrowing Vedmac. Starving Vedmacs terrify me. I guess Drekovex would technically be worse. With a starving and a harrowing, it's just a matter of having to blitz them down, man. You just gotta kill them. You just gotta kill them. And fast. Luckily, they don't have very much structure. All right, that was that was fun. Let's cut up. I don't really want to get into the speed uh, one while I'm in the middle of dragging a track uh, node. So, once again, to just explain a little bit, these medium automata suppressors, or these automata suppressors, will damage all drones, missiles, and uh, enemies' frigate rogue drones that come within range, with the short range being the most powerful. Um, 
and then the um, the multi-body tracking pylon will make tracking of any w turrets within range better. The cl clouds, the blue cloud makes everything signature or makes everything effectively larger and easier to hit. Orange clouds basically disrupt your shield reps. Wow, 12 million out of that one. Um, making shield reps basically inefficient and will cap you out if you try to run them. These gray clouds do extra speed. Yeah, good point. If you want to do manual piloting, the way you do it is by double clicking in space in order to uh, get it to go kind of the direction that you want. Turn the camera around in order to kind of get a position in three dimensional space. All right. You can do Q key manual piloting too, for sure. Do you using Q to move? To show that if you just hold down Q, it'll bring up a ring around you. That The first time you click will set the range, and the second time you click will set the elevation. And that allows you to like designate a point in three-dimensional space for you to approach. Really, really good if you want to like sit inside of a tether or something like that. All right, here we go. We might be able to get at least two or three more of these in. Um, where's the short range of Demi and Thomas? Oh man, let's just go there. <laughs> huh. Oh man, the suppressor's on the opposite side of them? E and they're ember. This. But none of them are ensnaring. I think I just go past them. Let's just go past them. I'm just going to go flying right past them. Overheated AB. Wow. I really need to bring down some of this damage. I think I've done. That's what I mean about like how fast things can go down it's hill, man. You got to know what you're doing. Oh man, and now I'm almost overheated my uh, my afterburner. So now I have to stop overheating everything. Hopefully nothing gets burned out. We're good. Oof. I'm just going to let this thing kill them all for me. And see, I'm manually piloting myself so that way I stay pretty tight to the, to the suppressor, forcing them to all come in. And now I'm just going to start heading down towards that gate. Hey, Kiki Blueprint. That's a good reward for a room like this.
We're going to chill out for a few seconds. Let my reload happen. Let the shields recharge. Let everything be okay. All right, we're going. Starving Damavix, tam Tangling Damavix, Harrowing Vedmac, Blue Cloud. All right, we're going to go this way. We're going to go this way. We're going to kill that Harrowing. Then we're going to start working our way towards the Starving. And I think we just let the Tangling get us for now. Nope, never mind. Now, one of the nice things is, so since Triglavians rely on spider tanking by hitting two different guys at the same time, I am kind of messing with their, with their spider tank. So that might help me kill, break one or the other. Boom. It's just that simple, ladies and gentlemen. But now I need to uh, try to conserve some cap because I'm getting muted out. Looks like that's pretty stable now, though. Spider tanking means each of them have remote reps. And so whoever you attack, they all start repairing that one. So rather than having any local reps themselves to repair the, your damage, the more of them that they are alive, the more that they can repair each other. The, the Harrowing, uh, the harrowing Vedmac just does so much damage. And so normally I would go with Starving first, by the way. But I know my ship has two capacitor sh uh, ca or, uh, cap batteries. So I've got so much cap resistance that I knew that I had to kill the, the damage before the cap, in this case. If it had had a starving Vedmac, then I definitely would have had to prioritize that. The starving da Damavix weren't nearly as big of a threat in that sense. And one last one. Still got one more room though. This has been a this has been a much more tricky uh tr this has been a tr much more tricky encounter. That's the whole thing. Don't let the abyss uh, lure you into complacency. As soon as you think it's too easy, that's when they that's when they bamboozle you. Uh, okay. Rogue drone battleships are giant hit point meat shields. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Let's hope. Let's hope that Obermine is not near the suppressor. Oh God, this is kind of nightmare scenario territory. This, this is the kind of room that if you got into this room with your worm, you might not have a worm anymore, because you need to do damage. The thing is is holding. The, uh, near the suppressor and your light drones aren't going to be able to survive nearly as well as my uh, as my medium drones are now it looks to me like I might be lucky and the the overmind is not under the suppressor but had it have been a little bit closer 
This would have been a bad day for my drones. And therefore a bad day for me. At least if I was a worm. I've gotten away with it as a, uh, as a Gila, because your drones have enough hit points that you can kind of get by. But, uh, yeah. You already lost your worm. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm fine with people flying the worm. It's a good kind of way for a new player to kind of get in there to tier two, tier one, tier two, uh, Frigate Abyss. But, uh, People just think it it's like a baby Gila, and it just doesn't make it the same way. So now I've pushed this uh, the rogue drone battleship well away from the uh, suppressor. That's good. You can see it's killed. The suppressor's already killed all of the other rogue drones for me. Which means I could theoretically go for this extractor node. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Oh, wait. I know why not. Because I would have to get past the suppressor in order to even shoot at it. What about VNIs? Uh, in the Abyss? VNIs can do pretty good. Yeah, VNIs can do pretty good. I think that actually they might be even better in the Abyss now that they got their changes and I haven't really evaluated them that much in the Abyss since then. So. I don't know how good, but I would imagine they'd be able to do at least tier 3. I know at one point there was a VNI, a, a propless VNI that literally just approached the gate in each room and just face tanked everything. I mean the uh, the change where they the the bandwidth change because they also gave it better tracking and better reps and that better reps is I think going to be the the critical part there. I'm going to dock up and repair again. <laughs> I probably have time for two or three more. Let's see where we're at. We have done... Five so far, because I've got five keys left. And... Ammo... And I've made 65 million ISK. So... Like 11 or 12 million is per run on average. And I haven't gotten any jackpots yet. I mean, and that's not include. Well, technically, I have gotten a jackpot. The Kiki blueprint. I don't know how much these are worth now. Hold on. The nice thing about the blueprints, because they're copies, they only sell on contracts, which means that you can check the prices from anywhere. So like five, six million. Eh, all right. They used to be a lot more. <laughs> I do love Kikis. I've been flying around one in Faction Warfare. So is Diana Kim. They're really good. Uh-uh. <laughs> Wrong filament. That could have been bad. Do not take a normal Gila into a dark abyss, let me tell you. I think I've done it once or twice. Not what you want, player. 
But look at this. All five, I've gotten, so I've gotten those five keys that I used, got 65 million isk, cost me 230 million, uh, 230,000 isk. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really good. Now, if this ship had has crystals and stuff, then it's a lot better. Edencom might have destroyed my crystal clone on my alt the other day, so I'm a bit sad about that, but... Oh, green screen. I wonder how long that's been that way. No. Whatever. And... Away we go. Capacitor. No? Did it already flash? Did I miss something? Did it not do it? Has that changed? Tangling, tangling. Wow, that's a lot of tangling. That's a lot of tangling and a harrowing. So, let's kill the Harrowing first so that the rest of them don't matter. Actually, you know what? I'm going to kill a Tangling first. I can kill a Tangling before the Harrowing gets here. Or not. Hopefully everybody's going to start repping the Tangling, and I'm going to be able to kill that Harrowing really quick. Yes? No? Are they getting spider tanked? Yeah, see, it got t it's getting reps from things, or at least it was until it died. Go this way. Actually, by the time I get all these tanglings dead, I'm, I'm, I mean, like, it, the room's going to be over. So I guess I might as well not try to make it all that distance. Unfortunate. I probably should have cut that direction in the first place. This is one of the reasons why I like to take a couple of extra seconds at the very beginning and kind of get an assessment of the room. That way I can build a plan. But, uh, you know. Sometimes you see a whole bunch of tangling and you go, oh crap, I need to focus on that. I also am like a little bit rusty, I'd say. So like manual piloting, I'm going to go right past this gate, and then I'm going to turn to cut around the backside. And speed cloud means I'm going to start earlier. <laughs> oh man, they're killing after my drones. I should pay attention to that. What? Why did my drones switch over? That was weird.
I'm not going to cut down the back again because I don't want to get in that orange or in that speed cloud again. That was room one, I believe. Entangler. Uh, extractor node, extractor node. Let's go this one. Doing okay. Cool. This is a classic room where it's like I'm grabbing an extra cat cash uh, for basically nothing, which is going to make me some extra money. This is why, like, even the even easy, e even if it's not a matter of the challenge of like whether or not you win or lose, it's a matter of whether or not you get a little bit extra. It's those little efficiencies. It's whether or not you make more risk, whether or not you make, you know, nine million or twelve million. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the tractor beam there, start the tractor beam on the new one, and start approaching the original one now that it's dragged up behind me pretty close. Like I said, I hope to have both these things looted and at the gate by the time the last rat dies. That's really cool. Oh, not quite. Very close, though. Very, very, very close. This room was super fast. Two rooms in eight minutes. Okay. We need it out. Uh, missiles flight range is 35 kilometers now. Got it.
Dang it. Why isn't my missiles making it there? There it is. Nothing. Boo. Boo. All right, after this one is done, I'm going to do probably one more. And then we can do the giveaways, wrap things up, all that stuff, probably. And uh, be good to go, guys. Dead Minds Podcast coming in with his sixth month of subscriptions. How's it going, 07 to you, sir? It's always good to see you, man. Go ahead and throw up your 07s in chat. My 07s, somebody else's 07s, any streamer's 07. Because we support Eve streamers around here. I'd throw up my own 07s, but I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Actually, I'm not really busy. Let me do this. Let me do this. Can I... 07. Boom. This one, this one. I'm going for... I just searched my thing for... I know there's some people with salutes and stuff, but this is all the guys with an 07 that I have subscriptions to. Deadmind, there you go. Deadmind, do you want me to turn that into an 07 for you? I'll do it. All righty. Let's go ahead and do one more. Let's go ahead and do one more. Remind me later. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll, I can do that. It's it's not too hard, not too difficult. You can see uh, the gray one. That's um, Hades, Hades Nations 07. I made that one for him, and I made my pod. More just a question: What kind of seven do you want? So speaking of sevens. That means in this two-hour video uh, or two-hour training video or whatever you want to call it, I did seven of these. Probably means I got like 80 to 100 million isk total. We'll see. Blast grip and snares, just like before. Snare, 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 snare. So now the thing is, is that with these guys, obviously the ones that are doing the right damage type are going to be, or the wrong damage type, however you want to call it, is more de deadly. So Strike do Kinetic, Ember does Thermal. So this guy right here, this Ember Grip, is going to be able to punch straight through any resistances that I might have too, which makes it even more dangerous. All right, we're going to kite up and over. Hold on, where are we going? Where's the transfer conduit? There it is. Let's go that way. Oh, man, that strike gift is fat. It's close.
Oh boy. I'm gonna pull these guys in and go for the other one. Let's go ahead and retire these for this round. Oh, that was not a smart idea either. Well, at least it lets me loot this. Well, I'm glad that you, uh, arthritis does suck. My, my mom had, has pretty bad arthritis, but, uh, I'm glad that you're doing better though. Deep watcher, fire watcher. Extractor, extractor, extractor. We're going that way. Excellent. Well, getting there is better than going the wrong direction. At this point, I think just uh, sustaining is pretty much victory in these days and age. So any progress is, any progress is, uh, commendable. One thing I really have been having to struggle and practice with is just being kind to myself, you know? Allowing myself to, uh, not get everything done and, uh, have that be okay. Not great, but you know, okay. The world doesn't burn down, as it turns out. No. It has been a hell of a year and a very and a unique challenge to everybody. That's right, exclamation point plunder. We will be doing the skin giveaway as soon as we are done with this round. My goal is to get these two extractors looted, done and heading towards there. Yay! Now I need to get back to there. I need to get to this Lucid Re Re Deep Watcher and 60 kilometers in before the first one dies. And then I have lost no time in grabbing these two extractors. Which one scope skin do you want? Wow, those deep watchers are doing a lot more damage than I expected them to. Oh, the bed mech. Yeah. I wonder when they're going to do that one. I do think it's awesome that they did uh, the the arm. Uh, sorry, the uh, Abaddon this month. You know, August is my birth month, and so I think it's fitting that the very first battleship I ever fell in love with uh, is our scope skin for the month.
But uh, I'm going to do a little bit something special for this giveaway. I'm going to do a little bit something special for this giveaway because of the fact that it is the uh, final Wii Hype stream. It's this Abyssal stream. So, and I haven't been able to give away too many skins recently. So you're going to get the, the, I'm going to pull two winners. And those two winners are going to have one of three choices. One of three choices. They're going to be able to choose either the Raven Scope Syndication skin, the Apoc uh, the uh, sorry, the uh, Abaddon Scope Syndication skin, or one of the three uh, premium Gila effect skins. Right. So basically. Be, to ju just like I said, just to celebrate this, you know, wh or what's going on today, just to say hi and thanks to everybody for hanging out and learning about the Abyss, checking out the Gila. I'm just going to do one of these, uh, like, again, you can you can choose the scope skin if you want to, obviously, absolutely, but for this time only, if you pull, if I pull it, you can either choose the Dark Field, Firestorm, Exostorm, or Afterglow skin for the Gila as well as uh, whichever one you prefer. If you win, exclamation point plunder for your chance. I think we've got one more room to go. Which is the most expensive? I don't know, man. Go to G to find out. Oops. No, CC, well, CC must have known. No, no, no. Actually, I, afterwards I told... Uh, I, I talked to CSP about it. I was like, oh, man, you chose my per the perfect one. Total accident. Trust me. They didn't even know. I didn't really think about it until it happened. So whatever. But I just think it's a, uh, you know, they didn't, they don't need to know. They don't need to know. But that's the thing about Eve. Like, these things happen all the time. It's as if they knew. But, you know, we're pattern recognizing creatures. So... Does it really matter whether or not they knew? No, I just get the right skin on my birthday. It's cool. It is true that... I I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say that the dark skin is the best looking one. That's the one I'm using right now. This is a relatively simple room, which is nice. Yeah, the dark one is 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 by far the coolest effects for sure. But like I said, I mean those scope syndication skins are good too. So you can get either of those. The Raven one, which is from last month. Uh the Abaddon one, which is this month. Or any of those Healer skins. I'll be pulling two winners. Always nice to wrap these things up with a quiet room. I didn't even remember the lucid expert Ex escort. My bad. Die. All right. One last chance. Exclamation point plunder for your chance to win. As soon as I dock up, I'm going to wrap up the stuff, lock it up and uh, pull the pull the numbers or pull the names. So 
Last chance, exclamation point plunder for your chance to win one of those skins. We'll show off all the skins real quick. First one is the Abaddon Scope Syndication skin. This is this month's part, uh, Eve Partner Program skin. Absolutely gorgeous. I actually will be running around in an Abaddon with this skin uh, in a stream, upcoming stream. Then we have uh, the Raven Scope Syndication skin, which was last month's, but I still have some extras because last month involved a whole bunch of other stuff besides doing streams that give away skins. Uh, and then finally, either the Afterglow skin, the Exostorm skin, hold up. Has ganking out of the Abyssals been a thing of all? It can be, absolutely. It, do, it, it does happen, especially when if you're near Jita. Firestorm, and of course, the Dark Field. Any of those could be yours if you are fortunate. Let's see who the lucky winners are. Hit refresh. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you guys have any questions about the Abyss before we finish this up, please throw them out now. All he wanted was a snooze. Well, them sleepers, man. Come on. There we go. Uh, it says we got three minutes and 48 seconds, but that's fine. I am at the two hour window, so this is this is good to go. All right, we're gonna close the entry. Pick our two winners. You have to be here. You have to respond within about 10, 20 seconds or so in order to win. And help me out with by letting you know, letting me know which skin you want. Let's pick the first winner. Dead Minds Podcast. Aren't you aren't you so glad you showed up? Aren't you glad you came and said hi? Sorry about your friend your hand, my friend, but you can chill me if you want. The Abaddon skin, the uh Raven skin, or one of the uh Healer skins. Which one do you want? Dead Minds? And while you're making that decision, I will pick one more winner. Three, two, one. Silent Tread. Si I, I, Silent Red, maybe? Dark Field. Oh, Dead Minds going for the Dark Field. It's a good choice. I better expect to see you in the abyss in that dark field soon enough. Well, the dark field has been taken, unfortunately, but you can choose any of those other remaining skins. Uh, Sillin, tell me how to pronounce your name at some point if you want to. Uh, in the meantime, all I really need from you is which of those skins that you want. Do you want the skin, so, Scope, Raven, or Abaddon, or do you want one of those Gila skins? I'd be willing to show you any of them that you want. And Rough Hades, if you want to, are you live yet? If not, you should probably go ahead and do so, so I can ra raid you over. Silent Red, see, I, okay, I was pretty close. Silent Red, uh, it was the double D that got me like, oh man, what is he trying to go with there? So, Silent Red, which of those skins do you want? Which Gila skin? You can pick from the Afterglow, the Exostorm or the Firestorm. I knew it was a mistake to offer up Healy skins. No, I'm just kidding. It's good to go. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, learning about the Abyss, checking it out, and taking these uh, Healy skins into the Abyss yourself. Make yourself into an Abyssal runner. Uh, which which one of them do you want, though, Silent? Silent. You want 
Do you <laughs> do you want uh do you want Exo, Firestorm, or Afterglow? Oh, you want the Gila. You just want the Gila. Is that right? Or is that what you're saying? You're like, you just want the Gila? Tell you what. You want the Gila right now. I will give you the Gila that I've been flying in this whole time. Unless you want the skin. Do you want, do you want the Gila skin? Oh, you want the purple? Do you want... Purple, green, or red? Yeah. Okay, okay. So you want the skin. Do you want Afterglow, Exostorm, or Firestorm? Purple, green, or red? Am I giving people too many choices? Purple. Done and done. Thank you so much, uh, Silent and uh, Dead Minds. Congratulations for that. I'll get those prizes out to you as soon as this raid is over. Uh, if I, for some reason, forget, feel free to hound me down, beat me on my door and remind me. I will get them to you right away. Uh, but I think that that about wraps it up for me for the day. Um, barring any other questions, I think that we will be wrapping things up. I want to be streaming more this weekend. And all that sort of stuff, but uh, I guess until then, I have been Asherathi. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I'm here to put Eve into context for you, my fellow Empyreans. Thank you so much for checking this out and watching this show uh, and learning about the Abyss. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check out the Twitch streams where I do these live all the time. Uh, and if you're watching it live on Twitch, realize that you uh, all of my Twitch stuff also ends up on my YouTube, and you can check it out there. Uh, if you want to support what we do, please consider subscribing on Twitch, following on YouTube, watching my videos, commenting, liking, subscribing, all of that happy horse stuff. Plus, of course, extra special thanks to all of my patrons that make this all possible. Um, and thanks to CCP and everyone else that for supporting and taking part in the community and making this game as awesome as it is. And until next time, once again, I've been Ashrathi, the voice of New Eden. Oh! There's a new World News article uh, that I've done the audio work for, and I've handed it over to um, Rough Hades, who has done some video work for it. I haven't checked it out yet, but I'm really excited. The goal is to get that out to you guys today. Um, I'm trying to get the World News out to you guys with, like, r with me reading them uh, pretty much as fast as I possibly can when they come out uh, to help keep the lore and universe and story in different focus and perspective, you know, context for you guys. So... All that said, like I said, I've been Ashrathi, the voice of New Eden, and until next time, I'll see you in space. See